You're watching Woman Without Limits. God today, watch him fight your battles. He is looking for leadership that will not exchange perks for presents. People expect you to give up, but something keeps moving. Telling you, there's more. viewers you're welcome to woman without limits i'm reverend kathy kuna and so delighted that you could tune in tonight i know that the lord has been blessing you and you know what we are continuing where we stopped last week remember i told you with joy she is an amazing woman she has such a powerful testimony and if you didn't watch her last week pray that we put it on youtube <laughs> so that so that you watch her She's powerful, and I believe that today is going to be even better. Welcome, Joy. Thank you very much, Reverend Kathy. Now you've come and you've turned into this political commentator that <laughs> you're on every channel. <laughs> Tell us about that. How, where, where did that stem from? <laughs> politics stems from church. <laughs> if you've grown up in church, you know that politics is mm. perfected in church. Uh, uh, totally. The intrigues. Yes. <laughs> I, I look at uh, they live in suspense. Yeah. Hi. You think this story is over then? Yeah. I, 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 I curve ball. <laughs> and it's all done in the name of God. Right. So I think I learned from an early age to get involved in these things because my father has been very intricately involved, not just in, in church planting, mm. but also in administrating mm. churches. Mm. It wasn't until um, I grew up and I made the conscious decision to be involved that I understood that there was a gap. Where, in the Bible, you see the prophets regularly speaking to the king's life and bringing direction and bringing ministry that was apt. And he always maintained a higher standard than the king. But then I noticed in Kenya, it's the other way around. Mm. And the priest is looking up to the king. And I was like, this doesn't seem very a, right. Yeah. And we had uh, a sort of brainstorming thing with some Christian professionals. And they said, you know what? One of the things that is lacking in this place is kingdom voices in the marketplace, but also kingdom voices speaking to the kings. Mm -hmm. And they decided, you know what? We'll make ourselves a critical mass. And so we started. I got in, involved in, in um, a political NGO, just fresh out of college. I left that to go and become a magistrate. So I'd started Kidogo Siasa here and there. So when we were doing the the orange campaign for the no katiba i was very much involved in the kenya church constitution thing then when it came to the red card campaign as well i was very much involved in that as well even now i sit on the board of the evangelical alliance and i keep speaking to the men of god telling them this is this is what is the truth 
about all this. D don't mm -hmm. go consult the lawyers. We have lawyers in church, right. and we'll tell you. And that's, that's another another story for another day because mm. even doing law at that time it was not in as a spiritual course to do and many people tried to dissuade my father from allowing me to do law saying you're losing her this is how you're gonna lose her mm. why doesn't she do something that is because there's too much compromise huh? exactly mm -hmm. but once I did law then one of the other bishops let his son also do law and another one and another one. before long wow. we had a critical mass my of daughter did law too yes now we have a critical <laughs> mass of Christian <laughs> lawyers Wow. Wow. Yes. Wow. And these are people who are the 7,000 whose knee has not yet bowed. So it's not a random one here and there. There's actually a critical mass. Wow. So we decided, you know what, we're going to be speaking into this nation. So they invite you for one show, two shows. Then I remember I did a year on K24 with um, Jennifer Shamala, where we used to do every Sunday, mm. State of the Nation. She's a kingdom person, I'm a kingdom person. So those are two kingdom ladies speaking wow. to the nation every single Sunday every single Sunday. And before we would go on the show, she'd be like, what do you think, because she's like, what do you think Yahweh is saying this week? And I tell her, this is what revelation I have. Wow. By the time you go on the show, you're oozing, not just politics, but you're oozing spirituality. Spiritual. Wow, wow, So that, that's powerful, mm -hmm. wow. And because this time around, I watched you, and then we kept on watching you with my husband and saying, wow, because man, you were so awesome, and then, you you you're so bold in what you say and you don't you can even be different from you can say something different from what everybody else is saying and you're fine because you choose to stand on the lord's side remember when joshua was saying as for me and my house mm. everybody else can be standing but you need to choose to stand on the lord's side and there are many times i'm sitting on the show and somebody asks me a question and it, in my mind i'm going lord what do you want to mm. say to oh, the wow. nation what do you want to say to the people and there are times when I watch the playback and I'm like, where did, did that come that? from? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but wow. I have learned to attribute the things of God to God. And I know that when he's put me there as a mouthpiece, unless I'm faithful to say what he's saying, then I'll end up with the, with the sin of Gehazi. I want to be like Balaam. Even if you give me money, if the Lord says I'm not cursing this one, I'm blessing them, please, we'll bless them. Because that's what, that's what the Lord says. Amen. But rather than become like Gehazi mm. who decides, you know what, the prophet makes more sense. Then you get leprosy. Exactly. But you know what also happens is sometimes mm. you're sitting on a show and it becomes spiritual warfare. The person sitting opposite you starts releasing seeds of anger and hatred. And, f and you sit there and you realize this has to be countered like here and now. So what Joy is saying, what you'll hear me say is, you know, the ingredients of fighting mm. from 2007, 2008 is not the same as what we have now. Mm. Because now you have the Kikuyus and the Kalenjin. And all that. That's what you'll hear me say mm. on air. But in the spirit, I'm saying, Iyo roho ya pepo ya vita. Yeah. Cancel. Yes, yes, in the because <laughs> if, if, yeah. if those mm. words go unchallenged, they become self-fulfilling prophecies. Mm. So we are sitting on air. You think I'm talking politics, but spiritually, it is Ramba Shanda hey. Shekere Sikere. Hey. There is no room for error. Mm. Mm. But it is important as wow. children of the Lord yeah. to occupy our space. Mm. And unapologetically so. Right, right. Because even if somebody tells me, you know what, when you go on air, I want you to say this. Often I will smile and nod and tell you yes. Yeah. That's exactly what I'm going to say. Mm. Then I sit down and please, I'm not taking any orders from you. Yes. I have a little earpiece from heaven. Yes. That is the one I'm listening. That's my producer. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, yeah. That is the one I'm listening wow. to. Wow. Wow. Mm. That will preach. That in itself. <laughs> Amen. That right there, Joy, will preach. That is awesome. Because we need those kind of voices that will really walk in the fear of God to Amen. bring sanity you know, not mm. take sides, but take God's side. Amen. And allow God to rule. Amen. You know? Yeah, that's really awesome. It's, you're doing a great job, Thank I you. must tell you. Thank great you, job. And you don't even look like you're shaken by any, even if somebody is upset and this, you're so cool, calm, and collected. That's how you know this is, that's the spirit of God. <laughs> <laughs> it is true. Some yeah. of them have been a bit intimidating. Right. And there are times when online it can become a bit... Phasing. And remember, there's once I was like, ah, scratch this. This is not my day job. It doesn't pay my bills. These guys don't pay me to do nothing. Mm. Let me go back fishing. And I remember I met one of my fellow analysts who's also a kingdom person. And he told me, look, you're a prophet to the nations. 
you are having a, an, Elisha, an Elijah moment. You've just slain the 400 prophets of Baal. And now Jezebel sends you an SMS and you want to cow. Hey. Like, come <laughs> on. Take this thing seriously. Mm, the journey is too long. Please eat. Exactly. See, that's what he was told. Exactly. Yeah, so <laughs> and so, that, so in I'm fact, that's you. where I am now. Yeah. <laughs> and I take that. That's a my word. Because yes. I'd gotten to a place like, do I really want to do this mm. anymore? The emotional investment in it. Yeah. The hate and abuse that comes right. your way. Your inbox yeah. becomes, you're even afraid to open social media. But I mean, to, to, you know, every, I don't think there's any form of leadership that's easy. I know. You pastor people, you're a nice pastor, uh, and you speak God's word. But you'll still be bashed. I know. <laughs> so you know what? <laughs> Wherever you as a leader, <laughs> bashing must come. That's but true. you can't coil and now say, oh, they've bashed me. No. That's they must true. keep throwing their stuff and you keep throwing what God has given you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You're preaching good, Reverend you know? you know? <laughs> <laughs> So Joe, you must never coil. We are watching, we are hearing, and it's powerful. And Amen. you must keep on pushing in Jesus' name. Amen. So, so how do you balance between family, between all the, I mean, you look like you have a mil trillion things to do. How do you balance between that and family? It's not a balance, really. It's a juggle. So you have all these balls, and you're juggling. And the most important ones are the ones you hold in your hand. And when they're less important, then the air. And that's what I do. So there are times when family must come first. That time I'll hunker down. You'll not find me. Like this last week, we've been having a house move. So th you'll not find me anywhere. Because at that time, my home needs my attention. My children need my attention. There are times when it's my husband who needs attention. You'll not find me anywhere. Because that time, that is what needs attention. There are times when Joy is tired. I need to recharge my batteries. You'll not find me that time because that's what I'm doing. But then there are times the grace is sufficient. And you'll find I'll be in three stations in one day. And I'll be telling the Lord, I'm tired, I want to go home. And he tells you, no, you have to take that call. You have to take that call. Take that call. You go. No, don't worry. I'll go with you. Wow. I've gotten to a place where I have learned wow. to trust in God's process. Like with my children. I'm a dental mom. I'm those moms who I can't <laughs> make it to school. I yes. will send a taxi fi, <laughs> yeah. pick them and take them home. Mm. I learned to let the Lord take care of what he needs to take care of. And I take care of what I need to take care of. And sometimes it becomes difficult because you feel like maybe I'm not being all I'm supposed to be. Then that's when you go back to what is your calling? Why, why did God put this in you? Which is why, in fact, for worship, I was trying not to release it. Because it was almost like my lifeline. Singing is my, it's my lifeline. Mm. And I kept hanging on to that ministry. Mm. It had to take a prophet to come and tell me, look, Joy, the Lord says you used to be a worship leader. Now you're just a worshiper. So you take the pew, you do your worship, and do worship in your private life. But you don't have to be a worship leader anymore. Wow. It was such a boo-hoo-hoo -hoo moment. But <laughs> these days you'll find me sitting in the pew. Wow. And allowing ministry to come to me. And if I have an opportunity to mentor worship leaders, I'm, I'm more than happy to do it. Because the children these days struggle with worship. Because for them, they came when worship was, woo Wow. We've got the mm. set of eh? mm. the dance and there's, the moves. There's the lights and the smoke machines mm. and the mm. whatnot. And some of them lack the basic infrastructure to lead in worship. So I find many of them, they do it, but they struggle. They don't know what they're doing. So I find there's room for mentoring in that area. Wow. But there are times when I look at it and I'm like, Lord, couldn't you have just given me two, good, two more years? Yeah. <laughs> but to whom much wow. is given, much is, much required. is required. So you move Absolutely. on. Absolutely. You, you move on. Right. Mm. I mean, you wear so many coats, but you seem to wear them well. Hey. Magistrate. <laughs> hey. That was easy, though. But were you jailing and what? Eh? And hanging by the neck until then. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> it was all part of, the, it came with the territory. And you were strong enough to do it. Yes. But you know, when, you, when you're a fair judge, a, a just judge, it's not difficult. Because I would walk out and go to Mwembetayari and sit somewhere. I'm having my, I'm doing my shopping, and somebody would tell me, eh, shika. So I'm like, what is it? Or you like, mama, mesema ngukabidi haa maembe. I'm like, Allah. And I look, it is somebody that I sentenced last week. She has finished her sentence, she has come out. <laughs> She's like, thank you very much. Uli nifunga, lakini kunifunga sana. Because <laughs> as long as you're fair, 
as long as you're fair, you're perfectly fine. Huko nifunga sana. So it's fine. There's a testimony. Let me wow. share this quick one. There's two people, Mwandwa and Monica. Monica, her husband and his Mpangwakando had conspired to take over her home. And so they brought her to court on um, allegations of child neglect. And when she came to court, she's like, ah, but I'm not neglecting my child. I don't understand what I'm doing here. This woman, in fact, is taking over my home. This is ridiculous. So I listened to the matter, and then it was taken out of my hands. It went to another court. But I was also children's court magistrate at the same time. But they had done the conspiracy such that they had her in criminal court for child neglect and all these things. And then they came to court trying to get custody so that Mpangawakando and husband raised the baby while she's in jail. How would God have it that I'm the same magistrate who was listening to the matter in children's court? Good thing was the child had a very unique name. I think they were Luo couple. Monica is not her real name. I think they were Luo couple. So the child had these names, you know, it's not Ben. It's a hard one. <laughs> yeah. So I read that name, I'm like, that name is familiar. I've had that name somewhere before. So when they come to court and I listen to the facts, it dawns on me. This, this is, is the, the couple that have brought her to criminal court for child neglect. And here they are trying to get custody. And in that instant, I was able to call for that other file, call for this file, and realize what the conspiracy was. So terminate this one, give her back her child, and terminate that one. You cannot do that unless you're a God person. Yeah. So he puts you in a place where wow. you can wow. pull such connections. Wow. Wow. So in the end, fine, her husband went with the other woman, but at least she wasn't jailed unjustly, and she got back her child. Mwandu, on the other hand, was actually a criminal. I think he was, he was a, a thief, if I'm not wrong. Mm. And I gave him, I think, three and a half years in jail. So he went for three years in jail. So he went on, and while he was in jail, he actually got born again. And he got active in ministry. So he comes out, and now I go back with a no campaign with Bishop Mark. So we're going waving our red cards. And we've called the, the pastors from uh, Coast. Mm. And Mwandwa is among them, unbeknownst to me. So Mwandwa is his real name. He's not Pastor Mwandwa. Right. So he comes to me afterwards. He's like, hello, do you remember me? I'm like, no, I actually don't. He's like, uh, my name is Flani Flani Ulinifunga Mnamo Flani. I'm like, oh, but you're out now. He says, yes. And I'm glad Ulinifunga because that's why I met the Lord. And now I'm a pastor. I am oh. serving. Wow. Wow. So those and now he's a pastor. Now he's a pastor. Those are some of the things that made me know, even when you're doing a job that looks nasty, it looks like this is not what believers should be doing. God is a God of mercy. Mm. He forgives everybody. No. Mm. Sometimes justice demands that you pay for your crime. And it is fair that you come before a judge who will give you your just reward. Wow. Because in getting your just reward might just be your salvation. So I encourage people who want to get into these undesirables. Just yes. go ahead and do it. Right. Go, go ahead and work for EABL. Wow. Go ahead and work for BAT. Pray over those cigarettes. That anybody who smokes it, it will just gather distaste in their mouth and they will look for the spirit of God. Pray wow. over your beer. Yes. We have to be serious. Take it so over by force. So we have to be integrated everywhere is Take what you're saying. Take it over by force. Run all the pubs. Stop Do hiding in church. Yeah, you take over a pub. You sit in your office in the pub and say, everybody who walks in that door, whatever is their bondage, break. Kata kata shandara shandashi. Kwani iko nini? Pasa ingia ndani, lipa taith. But let everybody who comes in find that this is a pub with a difference. Let you have a high turnover of clients because people are getting born again. They're coming to drink in your pub. Let them be reconciled to their wives. Because <sighs> the kingdom, the light, dispels all darkness. Hey! 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 Mm. Uh -uh. Hey, whoa! And it it's became true. a preaching. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> what? It dispels, of course. We oh, inoculated from sin. If you're really a child of God and you're really born again, you are inoculated from sin. Yeah. Because it's not what's outside that defiles you. It's what's inside. If your heart is where God has called you to be and he's leading you in that direction, occupy that space in faithfulness, knowing that you're a child of the king. You're a kingdom citizen. You're not doing it on your own behalf. <laughs> I get a challenge when I look at Muslims who will never touch pork with a 10-foot pole. No. But they'll sell you sausages. And use that money to go and do philanthropy <laughs> and grow Jesus. their dynasties and build mosques. Why do we feel that we have to just become nurses and teachers, nice saved professions? Let us occupy. Go to you become, Christ. yes. Hey, 
Hey, do you know you're delivering many? It's the water Occupy hyacinth principle. Yes, yeah. the water hyacinth principle. Mm. When you go in, multiply, fill it up, bring other bona. If they think they're going to get kadogo, they're wiping. She's like, eh, she's. There's a place we like going to eat with my dad. Um, it's uh, called what is it called? The Golden Spot. It's in Kilimani. Mm. They have some nice fish. The girl who serves us is actually a member of our church. She'll wear the little car outfit they are made to wear and she'll do what? But she's a kingdom person. Bishop, you're here today. Welcome. She'll give us our fish. How are you doing? Are you still strong? Are you? She's a witness and she's working in a place where you think saved girls don't work here. Wearing skirts, you think saved girls don't wear skirts that. But she'll wear it with her tights. And the people know she's born again. This is her bishop who's coming to eat here. That is the courage I'm talking about. So that you can be in the world and not of the world. Amen. Preach. I know. No, that's really, really powerful. So Amen. many people come to me and they tell me, I don't want to work here anymore. These are worldly people. I'm telling you. So you are delivering a lot of people. Mm. People lose their jobs because they are thinking of these people are drinking. But you've not been called there to drink. No. You've been called there to serve. You are the influence. You are the salt. You are the light. How much salt do you need in a whole bowl of food? You, you could be the one person, but you're the one person who effects change for everybody. Whoa. But it starts with living a life of true godliness. Because if you're not truly uh, godly, you'll get sucked in. It will become your Achilles heel. Mm. We have to be serious as believers to take our cues from the Lord's side rather than from what we see. From what our friends. That's what I was saying. You can't be passed out in the club and then you come in the morning and they're trying to lead worship <laughs> with a hangover. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. You can't be the one playing the drums and you were playing the club r last night. Because there's an unholy beat. It could be in time. But yeah. it is not holy. What is it communicating? We can't be having people who are kingdom people but want to be entangled in civilian affairs. You can be in that space but you can remain... People, let them call you bishop. They call you pastor. Mm. When they're throwing around, they know who yeah. you let Del Monte. Yeah. <laughs> Be that person. Yeah. Let them know you're that person. But you know what I've realized with my friends? Even though I'm um, the life of the party, but when the rubber meets the road, do I want you to pray with me? My mom is not feeling well. When he the knows, rubber meets the road, they he know knows, where to go. He knows. If I go to Joy, she's going to pray. Wow. Joy, my wife, she's leaving. She's leaving. I know I've done wrong, but please help oh me. Let's pray. Oh my goodness. If you're salt and light, they know where to, the people know where the where moth, the salt and who light teaches is. the moth where the light is. It just finds it. Hmm. So be the salt, be the light. Wow. Occupy until he comes. That's what he's called. It. We weren't called to stay in the upper room until he comes. No, we're supposed to scatter. Occupy. Everywhere. Let's occupy. Yeah. Every corner. Yo, that's powerful. Mm. That's really powerful. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. As you praise God today, watch him fight your battles. He is looking for leadership that will not exchange perks for presents. People expect you to give up, but something keeps moving. Telling you, there's more. Oh, Stephen, now here you are with all these hearts. Where is Stephen? Does he not get intimidated? What does he feel about his wife being on every channel? <laughs> and that's why I thank God that it took three tries to, yes. get, to get my Stephen. Because when I see him, he is such a gift. First and foremost, God knows. He knows joy. He knows joy is led by the eyes. She's led by the flesh. Yeah. So I was given eh, mirabamine. <laughs> 
Six foot tall, dark and handsome. Okay. He mm. is eh, all that and more. Yes. So I look at, at Stephen and I'm like, why would this girl want to be with me? Because even when I was younger, I was quite a handful. But he was not faced at all. First, I knew he had enough to deal with me with the way he dealt with my father. My dad was his pastor, was his family's pastor, because they were members of our church. So he'd grown up together. He was in school with my sister. I'm actually a little bit older than him. I am <laughs> a bit older than him. <laughs> so he's, he was in class with my, my sister who follows me. So he's a younger guy, trying to date an older woman, who wouldn't give him the time of day for I don't know how many years. And then my dad was just more intimidation. And he handled it like a man, just chewed it up and spat it out. He did not. Mm. And I realized, ah, kumbe. But there's one lesson that the Lord had to teach me, submission. That one I was taught. I failed that class. I repeated. I failed it again. <laughs> I repeated. I repeated until I got wow. it right. And God had to teach me to learn to submit to my Stephen. Because Stephen is the type of person who, if you really insist, He'll let you have his way. But if you listen, he'll say it once. And he'll, he'll not repeat it, it. Yes, and he'll not repeat it. You have to listen. And I thank God for him because he has used his priestly role in my life very responsibly. He's not unreasonably withheld his permission to do anything. Not really permission, but he works with me. So I'll give you an example. When things are becoming terrible on social media, my dad was tagged, he was tagged, everybody was tagged. Things became thick. They were so, tagging them. So my, dad, so my dad calls me and is like, eh, all this madogadanyo, eh? You have to stop going on TV. Yeah. So I, I looked at him and he realized uh, I'm not really skizzying him. It's coming in here and getting out through here. <laughs> so now he calls Stephen and I together. And he says, look, I'm her spiritual authority, but you're her primary authority. If you tell her not to go, she shouldn't go. If you tell her to go, then she should go. It's no longer her call, now it's your call. So when we walk out of Bishop's office, he looks at me and he says, you know what, what you do is really, really important. What we will do, we'll take it per show. If somebody calls you and that doesn't feel right, you will not go. And if it feels right, then you will go. So I was like, okay, that sounds like a happy compromise. Mm -hmm. That means I'm going to own my shoes. Yeah. <laughs> then somebody invites me. And when I told him, okay, I'm going, it was actually a, a, a speaking event. He looked and said, no, that's a setup. Don't go. And I was very surprised. I was like, are you serious? He said, yes. That sounds to me like a setup. Please don't go. And I thought, and once he said that, I was like, okay, let's do some due diligence. I said, Googling these people had invited me. And I realized, indeed, it was a setup. They're the type of group that, because I am a human rights defender, but I work with the church, so I'm conservative. So it will be the anti-abortion, anti-whatnot, and this guy's on the other spectrum. And if I had gone to that speaking engagement where I was supposed to interact with the crowd, eventually I would have said something that would have been splashed on and would have brought me trouble because it's happened to me before. And that's when I understood. Having a minister and submitting to authority for a woman of strength is very crucial because for me, he's my primary wow. shield. Wow. Mm. But, and I look at him sometimes and I think to myself, what did I ever do to deserve? So, because he's not faced. You come home at 11, not a problem. Have you eaten love? No, I haven't. So, ingia kwa jikoni, katakata vitungu. He will wait for his dinner, but he will cook. There are roles to be played. <laughs> <laughs> There's no shortcuts about it. And, yeah. and I thank God for that because it keeps wow. me grounded. Yeah. I mean, you've left the studio at 10 thinking, People are going to eat what the house girl had prepared. Sometimes he will, but often time, it will, will still be up to me. what his wife prepares. Yes, mm. it will still be up to me. And if I let the ball sleep two, three times, they'll call me and tell me, hey, I've not eaten properly all week. Tonight I'm looking for something good, and I know exactly what you say. Yes. <laughs> and uh, as a woman and authority, you have to understand. Mm. To, because when there's kingdom order, wow. then he orders a blessing. The blessing flows. That's what he tells wow. us in Psalm 33. Wow. But kingdom order must be there. Mm. And so I have learned to accept. And people look at you, you're such a powerful woman, you're so empowered. How do you do this submission thing? I'm like, you know what, submission is power under control. Come on. If you cannot control your power. Preach. Mm. Preach today. Yeah. Yeah.
That's what I say. Yeah. Yeah. And he's, he's my prophet. So if he speaks into my life, I receive it. And if he says that's not going... Like Elaine, you're asking with the two-year-old, for a long time we had no agreement about having more children. Anybody who knows Joy knows I wanted seven babies. I was like, let's give us a full quiver. Yeah. <laughs> that was me. And it was what? not as... It was not a, a Siri. And while he was dating me, he was happy to go along with it. As soon as we got married, he made the intention clear. Once, if we, God favors us to do a girl and a boy, it's over. So what does it's God a wrap. do? It's yeah. girl and a boy, and it's a wrap. And for the longest time, I could not get him into a place of agreement to have another child. I had to submit and wait until he said, fine, let's do one more. And then Elaine came. So it's, it's one of those things that I keep telling people, you know, the devil's strategy is to keep us bound. And, mm. But I understood it's not a bondage. Because, because we were in agreement, right. she was such a sought-after child. And when she was born, she came premature. And it oh. was such a financial strain on the family, emotional roller coaster, because you don't know whether she's going to live, whether she's going to die. Wow. If I did not have him... At, at how many months? She came in at 30 weeks. 29 years, 29, 30 weeks. Wow. So and she's was like barely a boy, kilo. Yeah. So you're barely looking at a kilo. So you're looking at this little thing, will she leave? And now my other children are like four point two kilos, four point five. I used to give back to giants. Mm. Then you have this <laughs> itty bitty thing and you're like, Will she live? If we were not in agreement at that point, you'd have been you see, you and this baby yeah. of yours mm. deal with it. The money for hospital because they don't cover babies unless they were born at term. Right. So when they are premature, they are basically your monkey. Mm. You deal with it. And I realized it was by God's grace. And the fact that she's alive today, she's hale and hearty and strong, and I was able to name Mama Joy. Oh. I really wanted... Ma Elaine is Mama Joy's other name. Right. I realized it was actually an inheritance. So fine, I didn't get my full quiver, but my hands are full. In fact, the Lord tells me, if you had had your seven, would you have been doing these things you're doing? <laughs> And I say, yes, Lord, your plans, so your ways are work. higher than my ways. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm very wow. grateful for my three. Wow. Mm. Thank you so much, Joy. You're amazing. Tell us, is there something we do not know about you that you would want us to know? Yeah. <laughs> I have serious X files. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think the one thing that I think what I was even sharing with Isabella before we started, if I could, I would have been. A singer all my life. I would never have bothered with the Lord thing, with the word thing. I enjoy the Lord. But when I started ministering in worship, I fell in love completely and totally and thoroughly with it. And I really wanted to do it until the Lord gave me a revelation. And told me, look, why did I give you this gift? If this gift was meant to be for commercial purposes, why would I bother to take you through law school? Because the story of my education was a miracle. At that time, my parents were not well off. I think from primary school, from nursery school to university, I did not use 200,000 bob. I think my entire fees was like 150, because I was always in sponsored programs. Because those days, my parents did not have much. And I was like, why did I bother to make these ways for you? And you know very well, most of those ways you did not deserve to be there. I pushed you through for you to come and decide, because I tried to drop out of school in Form 2 to go lead worship full time. I said, it's because I need you to do something else for me. And this is what I need you to do. I need you to be the voice and the light. Then now, fast forward, and it's not just singing. Now I, I, I want a taste of ministry. Now ministry is not as bad as it used to be. Yes. I'm looking at it, I'm like, hmm, I could live with work. this. Yeah. But God tells me, look, what makes you think what you're doing now is not what I have called you to do, that this is not full-time ministry? If you decide today you're wearing a collar and you become Reverend Joy, there are some people who will not listen to you simply because you're a minister. But when you walk in and you're Joy the advocate, they'll be thinking, oh, there's a lawyer in the room, let's ask the lawyer what she thinks. Mm -hmm. But if I'd come in in a collar, they'd be thinking, oh, this other pastor, what do they know? And I understood that I may really, really want to sing, and I may really, really sing well. But there are times when you're given a gift just for it to be an alabaster box moment. Mm. You just pour it back to God. Right. So if you find me in the place of worship, it is, ah, it's spontaneous. It is brokenness. And that's what I was telling Isabella. I wish children today would understand, and worship leaders today would understand, 
Worship is all about Psalms 51. It's all about the broken and the contrite spirit. It's not the ad lib. It's not the, the lovely music. It's not the smoke and the lights and the whatnot. It's a broken and contrite spirit. If you get that right, you could be tone deaf with a tone deaf choir. But at the end of the day, the spirit of God will move so powerfully. So that's the one thing sometimes people look at me and then they're like, okay, so why are you so... I'm like, when it comes to worship, oh. <laughs> that's the one thing about me people don't get. And they're like, oh, you have such a beautiful voice. Mm. Oh, you have such a lovely voice. Mm. Like, it's not the voice. It's that anointing. Right. And it's something that every believer can, can strive to. Because you know what? Worship is a little bit like sex. It is proper intimacy where it's just two people. It is you and the Lord. And if you do it right, it is mutually satisfying. If you do it wrong, only one person gets something out of it. And if only one person is getting something out of it, and especially when it's you, yeah. it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Because we were created to be poured out back to him. Right. Wow. Mm. That is so awesome. <laughs> Where is joy headed? I wish I knew. <laughs> That's one of those questions. I, I honestly wish I knew. Because right now my parents are not exactly advanced in age, but you can see there's a pat passing of the baton. And it's been a very interesting moment for me because part of me wants to now go and help them full time to deal with what they're dealing with. But the other part of me is also Stephen, the house that Stephen and Joy built. Right. So I'm actively building this house, but I'm not wanting that house to fall. But it's not going to fall because the work of the Lord, I know. he takes care of it himself. Yeah. But one thing I do see myself, and which I ask the Lord, is I want to continue being an influencer. Mm. Amen. Especially being the priest, mm. speaking to the king. One thing I've never been afflicted with is shyness. I don't get, I don't get star struck, struck. I don't care who you are. You walk into a room, I give you respect, but... If I need to tell you something, I'll tell you, Reverend Kathy, there's something right here. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm that kind of person. Yeah. I'll not be like, how could they tell her that you had? And I, I asked the Lord, give me that room where I can tell the king, you know what? There was a man who had one little sheep and there's a man who had many. I want to be that kind of influence to the king. I want to be the person who will tell them the truth. That if they need to bounce off an idea of someone, Amen. they can ask, where is joy? Is there no man of God in this mm. city? Wait, wait, there's a man of God. Call him. Mm. What is the Lord? That's what I want to be, Amen. not just for Kenya, wow. but even for the body of Christ. Mm. That even the church leaders, when they want to see, is there a faithful lawyer who can tell us what we should do about this thing? Then at least they would call me. If I'm faithful and I'm, the Lord gifts me to have that opportunity, I will be more than happy to carry on doing what I'm doing. But in the meantime, mm. Stephen's wife, yeah. then Nicole's mom. <laughs> Uh -huh. So, uh, and, and what, what's, is that the kind of legacy you'd like uh, to leave behind, where you give answers and salt and... For profession, yes. But in terms of legacy, I think Mama Joy has set a high standard. Because she was in a place where she could very easily... Because, you know, today's pastor's wives, like you, are very empowered. And you can see their place in ministry. It's true. But Mommy come, came from a time when... Pastor's wife just sat at the back, basically. He didn't even have a seat in front. My mom never sat in front, I think, until I was like about 15, 16. Is when one Seriously? day, dad was like, where's Mama Joy? And she was somewhere at the back with Paul. I was like, no, come here. From today, this is your seat. Well, look, I'm like, oh, hmm. <laughs> today's first ladies. Yeah, Don't right know. there. Exactly. Mm. But the thing that she never let get in her way is that bitterness, that anger. She, she had grace, it was grace and a fire. Until today, there are people who don't think she can even say a prayer. But I know, mommy preached to us every single day. She made sure we had family altar every day. She made sure that she was like, you know what? He can preach to the masses and get everybody saved and gone to heaven. I'm responsible for the five of you. I have to get you to heaven. And I've watched her life, how she has submitted to my dad, how she has supported him in ministry, how she... She made sure we did not go without, even when ministry wasn't paying, because those a time ministry paid nothing. But she, she did not have that thing of it's my money, you're the man, you better take care of this. 
No, she covered him and made sure that everything was paid. He never had the thought of getting his hands into the till. She kept telling us, you need to pray for your father. And for the longest time, we knew to pray for three things, girls, gold, and glory. Like those are the three things that bring a minister down. I, I think I was in primary school, and we'd pray and tell the Lord, girls, gold, and glory, keep them far oh. away from daddy. <laughs> Oh and that is a legacy I hope I actually truly live that my children would know. I am born again because of my parents' testimony. It's not because of what I've seen in church. I've seen the blind see. I've seen, we've gone for Bonke Crusader. I've seen all those who labalu things. Eh? But it was a witness in my home that made me understand this God is real. Hey. And that's the work of my mom. Yeah. And I hope I leave that with my kids. Yeah. Mm. And you hope you leave that with your kids. If I get them to heaven, I'll have done my job. The rest of this remains here. You know, you'll read about it in history. Who cares? I'll be dead. But if I get them to heaven together with me, and when we're in the great cloud of witnesses, they are there together with us, I'll have done it all. That will be it. That's the cherry on the cake. So that's what I hope I accomplish. Amen. Mm -hmm. So now there's a little girl. She's 15, 18, 21, 27. She has no idea whether she's coming, going, or gone. She's in that confusion. Maybe a PK is kid that's even rebelling. What would you tell her as you look at that camera and just minister to that girl? To everything there is time. Everything under heaven there is time. There is a season and a purpose to everything. Live your process. Because God uses everything in your life to work out for your good. There's one thing that I firmly believe that there's no wasted experiences in life. So you've had an abortion. So you've had 16 boyfriends. So you're the one who's the alabaster box. You're the Mary. You've been the good girl, always seeking after th things of God. Leave your season. But one thing you should never forget, you have only one plumb line in life. What does the word of the Lord say about you? Read that word over and over again. Learn the promises over and over again. So that in every situation, you ask yourself only one thing. What does the word of the Lord say concerning this situation? And you'll find whatever your season, whether it's plenty, whether it's thin, whether there's much, whether there's little, at the end of the day, all those things will surely work together for your good. Be courageous. Like God told Joshua, be strong and of good courage. And at the end of the day, he will never disappoint you. You'll finally get there. You'll see. Wow. Beautiful. That is so beautiful. Joy, you've done such an amazing work. I well, totally believe you. somebody has been totally delivered Amen. forever. I mean, everything <laughs> you've said has been just so powerful. And we thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you so much it's for such coming. such a privilege. Amen. Amen. Wow. This is Woman Without Limits. May the good Lord bless you and keep you. Remember to tune in next week, same time, same channel. Thank you so much. Today, watch him fight your battles. He is looking for leadership that will not exchange perks for presents. People who expect you to give up, but something keeps moving. Telling you, this more. Oh, They say that if you want to hide any secret from an African, hide it in a book. Now we are changing that notion because that devil is a liar. Because the word of God tells us to read and read. And then after we read, we read some more. I have written a book on celebrate yourself. I want you to understand as a woman, if you don't know how to celebrate yourself, nobody will ever celebrate you. You have to know who you are. You have to know what you want so that you can also be celebrated. So get this book.
Call the numbers on your screen and you're going to get it. I wrote another book. It's called Woman Without Limits. This is this program. And this is who you are. Nobody can limit you but you yourself. And until you realize that and recognize that you have the power to stop yourself or to move on, then you get out of your way and move on in life. Get this book. It's going to bless you. Oh, oh, oh.